everybody, this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly, back at it with the Spectre 700 build. This is the third part in the series thus far, and today we're going to be going over the tail rotor and tail boom assembly, and um, I believe by the end of this uh, there should be just one last video, which will be the main assembly of the, of the boom, uh, the main rotor, the main gear, and everything else. But I wanted to take a look at the tail. Now, luckily enough, into the third video, they finally updated the manual uh, and came out with a very, very well designed one. It's almost similar to a Goblin manual, very well produced. So I'm going to be putting some images up on screen here of the new manual. <clears throat> I apologize if it throws you off, but just know that's what's going on now. I went ahead and I got all my tail parts lined out here. The first step in the manual, which I'll throw up on screen here real quick, looks like it's going to be for... Um, the tail boom assembly kind of off off the gate uh, and then it does want us to put the hub and everything on along with the belt I'm gonna do it a little bit different and I'm actually gonna start construction I guess I could say deconstruction first this is all just kind of factory put together nothing seems loctited though so as always I'll take it apart clean all my threads and we'll reassemble but I'm gonna, I'm gonna disassemble this and I'm gonna actually build the tail rotor hub assembly and everything first um, of course, I'll make sure to notate, you know, you want to make sure you get your belt and everything in. And then I'll come back and I'll do the tail boom <clears throat> once we're completed. So, let me find the right step in the manual first. Let me get everything that you guys see here disassembled. And then we'll go ahead and we will begin the assembly process. Alrighty guys, so the first part that I'm going to be um, looking at here is going to be the actual, the, the, the pulley box and, and, and gearbox assembly here right at the end. And then we'll go ahead and we'll move on to doing the, uh, the grip arm assembly. Now this is pretty basic and pretty straightforward. There are some pretty important things, which again, thank goodness the new manual actually specifies these things. Um, I did notice the tail shaft looks pretty symmetrical on each side, but um, where the grub screws go in, there is in fact a shorter end and a little bit longer end. Uh, it does specify in that manual to please note the, the, the importance of those. The, the shorter grub screw setting will be for the tail hub, whereas the longer one is going to be the side that's actually going to go into um, the box assembly here, and we'll, we'll use these uh, collars. This little metal O-ring came pre-installed on it, and it shows it in the manual, so I'm just going to leave it on there. I'm just thinking this is maybe just dampening for the slider, but I'm sure we'll find out as we progress. And then last but not least, you've got the actual... Uh, the tail pulley here, or, or pinion, whatever you want to call it, and then we also have one collar. Now, from what I can tell in the manual, my specific kit, which came with all the upgrades, should have the 16-tooth pulley. They do make um, a 17-tooth pulley available, and based upon your settings and your flying style, just make sure you, you choose your pulley uh, accordingly. So, yeah, it's basically simple, guys. Uh, also, take in mind orientation of the actual tail box itself. Of course, the side where you have the three pins is going to be where your tail fin assembly is going to go, and I'm assuming this to, to pin the tail boom. So you're going to, of course, want to make sure that when you assemble this, the tail shaft should be sticking out in the opposite direction of where your tail fin is going to go uh, because we're running a setup where our main rotor is clockwise, so the tail rotor will be counterclockwise, and to, to counter that torque, we're on this side. So don't let those things confuse you. Um, of course, hot tip, hot tip, make sure you put your tail belt uh, through the assembly here and, and, and get it onto your pulley before you assemble everything and lock tight it all up. Otherwise, well, you can't get your tail belt on. So I'm going to go ahead and do this initial step here. I'm going to get my belt on. I'm going to get these pulleys and everything locked into place along with the collar. Now, it does specify in the manual as well that if there is any play, once you get this in, that you can, you can adjust the collar um, as needed. But mine was, mine was pretty dang tight, so I don't think we're going to run into that. So let me get this initial step done here, and then we can move on. Hey, guys, also, just a real quick tip. Um, I did notice in the manual there's a new specification we want to look at is you do have, okay, so your tail, your tail pulley also has an already built on or machined on, if you will, um, part for your grub screws, almost like a collar. And then the other one has the collar separate. It's important that per the manual, the pulley with the built on collar is gonna go in um, with this direction 
uh, facing towards where your tail fin would go. So don't don't confuse those. I don't know if it's going to matter or not because again the space is so tight. But just upon studying the manual, and I'll try to do a quick screenshot of it here with a zoom in. Let's take a look. From what I can tell on there is it looks as though the uh, the tail pulley with the collar machined on is going to go in first. So go in right here. Let's see if we can throw it in real fast. And then make sure we have it in the right orientation. And again, it's going to go towards the, the, the collar will go towards the sides uh, where you have the, the tail fin. And then from there, I found that if you just kind of pinch the, the belt, it's a little tricky. Then you can kind of jimmy your collar in and then go ahead and slide your shaft in and lock everything down. Make sure 110% that you are set in on your set screws um, before you tighten down the inner collar as well. So you want to make sure that there's no play. So uh, just a real quick tip I came across. Let me go ahead and get this part done and we'll come back and recap. All right, guys. So I went ahead. I got everything uh, nice and tightened up as per the manual. Again, the belt is installed taking... Um, close note of the direction the tail shaft needs to stick out it'll be the opposing side of these three bolts here um, and I just you know again I made sure everything was thoroughly loctited and it does say to really give them a good turn so I gave them a good wrench I mean you don't want your your uh, tail flying off in flight so um, everything looks good here now the next step in the manual which I'll go ahead and post up here it looks like this is another one of those nice updates that they've decided to add to their manual because it shows the basic kit with the old manual, which again, terrible. This new one's awesome. And then the new upgraded kit, which we're building for you right now. Um, on the basic kit, it looks like it came with almost like a, a belt guide and then two little rollers in the back. If that is the kit that you have, assemble it as such. For mine, I just need to actually have, uh, it looks like just it just labels it as a belt tensioner. And essentially it looks like a roller uh, the factor or the, the the bearings are pre uh, pre pressed in there and everything, and then it just gives you your two spacers right there. So this step's actually pretty easy and straightforward, guys. It looks like um, going towards the front part here. Um, you'll take the longer bolt that it, it included in there. You'll put that through, and then you're going to just do a you'll you'll do a spacer, the roller, and then a spacer. And I'm assuming. Uh, based on the original design, instead of having a roller up here on top and a guide, they're actually just putting straight tension now right here on this part of the belt to help it ride. And then um, you don't have the part that sits right over here on top. So just a new updated design. Keep that in mind. I'm going to get that part done and we'll come back and do a quick recap. Okay, guys, bringing it back. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just state this. Um, this tail looks very well designed, very robust, and I'm going to assume that it probably has very little failures. Um, but my goodness, was this thing a little bit of a pain in the butt to get assembled. Um, even this part here, again, on the upgraded kit, I mean, I had to, had to get out some little little forceps and stuff and really jimmy down in there to get my, my screw and everything in, because it's tight. Uh, it looks like that belt, that belt is going to be riding tight. I'm going to assume up front, um, the reason why they upgraded the tensioners there too is to really keep this bell extremely tight. Otherwise, you're going to be grinding teeth. But this is the way that it specifies it to be designed, so I'm just going to have faith that it's uh, true and, and it's going to work. But I'm a little curious on that part. But other than that, everything looks very well assembled. Um, everything's nice and free. I'm not getting any weird binding or notching, and everything is nice and tight. Now, the next step in the manual, it's going to want us to install in on the tail, uh, the tail fin, and everything. I'm going to leave that off for now. I usually do that once I get ready to put the actual boom and everything in. So I, I don't have the boom in yet and I don't have the tail fin on. If you'd like to do those steps, feel free. I'm going to focus my attention more towards this side now and, and this upcoming step. The tail belt does kind of get in the way, but I mean, hey, it's a belt machine, so we've got to deal with it. So we're going to start assembling um, the pitch control arm and everything. So let me get that part pulled up here real quick. We'll throw it on screen. And I believe there's not too many changes in the actual design. I do know that on the older kit, uh, this part here should be the same. Um, your, your guide rod arm assembly, I believe, should be the same. They did change 
I think three different times from what my research has found the control arm. Now in my updated kit I have one that's actually got a bent angle to it and it's metal. Um, it is true or at least I have discovered that in the event that you have this kit you're going to have to alter or modify the original tail control push rod by a couple millimeters so you're going to have to cut it um, because this uh, new tail geometry is actually going to allow or call for a shorter tail rod guide. Um, I have he heard people say that you can actually just sink the, um, the threads down and actually bring your link arms all the way in. I'm going to try both options and we'll see which one works but just a heads up if you have just a straight plastic or straight carbon fiber one then your link rod should be fine. If you have the metal one that's angled like this, just be a heads up for that. Um, and then we'll get out the little control arm thing here. So um, let me go ahead and get everything organized for this, guys. So I'm just going to go ahead and follow the steps up here on screen real fast. Uh, and I'm going to get the assembly itself done. If I have any tips or anything to come back to, um, I will be, do, uh, be sure to do so. If not, we'll just come back with the final review. Alrighty everybody, I am back and I believe for the most part I'm, I'm up to par here with where we're at in the instructions. Um, the next step we're going to take a look at is going to be doing the actual tail uh, grip arms and everything. But before we do that, one thing I ran into, okay, so thus far everything feels really good. Um, as always, it should be just insanely smooth. I mean, you shouldn't get any sort of resistance or fight back, on, especially on your tail servo. Um, a lot of gyros seem to have issues that stem from uh, mechanically the tail not being just as free as a bird can ever be. So everything's tight in the way it's supposed to be. Now I ran into one issue so far. Uh, and in my experiences, usually it's one or the other. It's never really both. So I'm going to hope that um, the plastic arms here are supposed to be as stiff as they are. Usually they should just be buckling under their own weight at least with most machines. I mean, it's actually pretty hard to move these. And at this time, I'm not going to go and sand the special washer in there or try to ream it or anything. I'm, I'm going to see what, hap what happens once I get the full assembly done. But I noticed on both sides, they are, they are pretty stiff. And I don't know if um, with enough working in, if they will loosen up or if it's designed to be a little stiff there to eliminate some, some jitters or some play or something. Um, and also on the back side, it does specify to Loctite these, but do not over tighten because of course then you'll clamp down on the plastic. What I did is I put a drop of Loctite in the hole right there on the very back. And then when I threaded the bolt in, I threaded it in all the way and then out a few times and then kind of just gave it my little bit of a lockdown. That way there's Loctite sitting on the back. So since they're not really wrenched in, they also can't back out after, you know, a, a couple series of flights. So. Um, I'm a little nervous about this, guys, but from what I hear, this build should be pretty dang spot on, so I'm going to check some of my resources, but for now, uh, if yours are a little bit tight, I would say don't panic, and if they're really, really loose, then the looser the better. So, let's go ahead and move on to the next step here. Now, this is going to be just similar as the main rotor. I'm going to take everything apart. I'm going to grease the thrust bearings and reassemble per the manual. Make sure you get the grease in. Make sure you clean uh, with um, isopropylene rubbing alcohol anywhere thread lock applies. And also make sure you pay very close attention to the orientation of your thrust bearings. Um, the larger ID or looser fit always goes in. And then the tighter ID or a really snug fit always goes on the outside. So I'm going to get this taken apart. I'm actually going to fasten my hub to the main shaft first and then just assemble each grip on from you know left to right fashion however you want to do it so let me get that done and we should be able to come back with the final assembly okay guys everything is completed so i have not yet connected the um the plastic arms to the ball yet because i wanted to show you guys look i mean my tail completely smooth again the grips don't collapse on themselves it looks like I think they included some additional shims if needed. Mine, again, no outward play, completely smooth as a whistle. Um, the movement of the actual mixing, uh, everything on there, completely smooth. Okay, yours should be this way. Now, I'm just curious because I can already tell you for a fact, um, based on the direction and orientation that it wants uh, per the manual is... These will just snap on. So let's, I'm going to snap these on with you guys on camera because I'm really curious to see 
what kind of a dynamic this is going to have because they're tight you know again they're they're pretty freaking tight on there so let's snap these on ah, kind of hard to snap on too all right now you know actually surprisingly enough i mean it's it's a little rough it is not as bad as i was thinking it was going to be so i think that's going to be fine uh, if I'm being 100% honest, I, I don't necessarily see any issues with it. And I guarantee the more I work those parts in, I'll probably sit here for like an hour or two and just try really working on these and we'll see if it loosens up because yeah, I can already feel it getting looser. So I don't think that's going to be an issue like I initially thought. I do wish, however, it was a little more free. I mean, if you guys want to go in and sand or lightly dremel or, or use a reaming tool, anything you can think of... Um, creatively to alleviate that little bit of tension that it has, I would say take the time to do it. Um, me, I fly quite a bit, so I, I know that, you know, within a few flights or so, that should be worked in. Um, like most tails that I see out there these days, it looks like this one does also have a little bit of the angled geometry on the, on the linkages. People ask that question a lot, like, hey, is this supposed to be completely straight or slightly angled? Goblins have it. Um, let me make sure I'm not lying to you here. Yeah, it looks like it's got a little bit of a twist into it. And I can't untwist that out, so. Yeah, overall, guys, that's going to be the tail build and assembly. The next video I'm going to make, um, I'm going to go ahead and just install the boom and the fin off camera. I mean, that's all pretty easy, straightforward stuff. Um, it does look like, and I'll, and I'll try to throw it up on screen here, is um, when you do the boom, there is, uh, where the tail fin clamp goes, there's a little piece of heat shrink tubing that it gives you. Um, so just be aware of that. You're going to want to make sure you put that in the right spot, heat it down. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do the, the boom and the fishing and everything of the, of the belt off camera. Um, if you guys have any issues with putting your belt in through the boom, a really good trick, just get a toothpick, uh, toothpick and a piece of floss. Tie it around here and then just feed the toothpick through the boom and then just pull the, the belt through with the floss, um. Should be able to just kind of nifty it in through there, though. Um, and then the next and final video that we will be doing, guys, is going to be the complete assembly and review. So I'll come, I'll come back with everything built. We'll talk about how to install the main shaft, install the boom, and also the main gear. And after that's done, you guys are all good to go. We'll move on to things like the electronics and the programming and the setup and stuff. So, uh, as always, thanks again so much for watching. Um, the Spectre 700 tail build assembly. And remember my friends, if Freddy can fly, so can you.